Let's talk about the best trick or, or way or method of finding out if someone is cheating on their diet. Now, there's a lot of weight loss programs out there that have cheat days built into the program. And I think that's a mistake because it's going to severely affect the results. Because once you start, it's really hard to stop. That being said, I was the worst of the worst, okay, as far as cheating on my diet. It took me years before I started to be consistent and have discipline. Now I have very good discipline, but in the past, it was terrible. I would sort of do it, go off, go on, go on, until I basically really um, hit bottom. I think it's good sometimes to experiment, to go off the program, just to see how your body responds so you finally, hopefully sooner than later, can be convinced that being on the program is the best thing. I just like how I feel when I'm on the program consistently versus off the program. Now, when I had my clinic, there's a I had a lot of people coming in that would would cheat on the program. They would initially come in saying, "Well, the program's not working. I'm not getting results." So I had to kind of pull out of them, you know, maybe potentially cheating on the diet, but without making them feel guilty or bad about it. So I would very gently ask them, "Is there anything that you're eating that maybe you shouldn't be eating. And initially they would just say, no, I'm on the program exactly. Well, I did have a little bit of potato chips, but they were organic. Or I did have some wine, but it was only a little bit. I remember there was a Whole Foods uh, right next to my office for a period of years. And, and I would shop in there a lot. And one time I was at the salad bar and I was looking through the glass at a patient um, in the bakery section. And I'm just watching her. She kept going past these free samples, these free uh, brownie samples, uh, until finally she was looking to the left, looking to the right, and grabbed one and ate one. And then we happened to connect. Our eyes connected. And she quickly, her face turned red. She turned around and started bolting in a different direction. So I had to run after her and say, listen, it's totally okay. Don't worry about it. I think uh, the goal is to create enough health in your body. Uh, be out of the danger zone to the point where you can go off the program when you want to temporarily and go right back on because you have control over it. I think that would be the goal. But there's a really uh, good scientific way to know if someone has gone off the program. And by going off the program, I'm talking about eating carbs and sugar. Testing your blood sugars is not the best way because it only tells you what's happened the day before or the day of. But checking the A1C can give you an average of three months of ingestion of carbohydrate or the absence of eating carbohydrates. What is A1C? It's a test that measures how much glucose is stuck to the protein in your blood. And so the more sugar that you have in your body, the higher percentage of your hemoglobin is affected or exposed to glucose. So we really want this A1C percentage to be below 5.7. Because if it's even like 4.4, your blood sugars are like roughly around 79 or 80, which is really good. But if your A1C is like 4.0, your blood glucose levels are running around 65. Now you might say that, well, that's hypoglycemia, abnormal. Well, when you cut out sugar from the diet, your blood sugar levels will start going down and down and down in the 60s. And that's normal because you don't feel bad from that. But the bottom line is you want your A1C to be below uh, at least 5.7. When they start getting above 5.7, you go into what's called a pre-diabetic range where your blood sugars oscillate between like 117 and up to like 124, 137. And then when the blood sugars get like in the 140s, your A1C is going to be around 6.5. That's diabetes. And I've seen people um, have A1C like 11. Um, so it can go really high, and the higher it goes, the more complications you have from diabetes. And I'm talking about the the four big ones are complications to your eye, complications to the inside of the arteries around the heart, complications to your kidneys, and complications to your brain and nerves. Okay, the bottom of your feet become a problem, like numb, pain, burning, things like that. And then you start getting uh, what is that? Um, memory problems, dementia. And the other thing to know is that if you're anemic or you're on certain medications or you have other body problems like organ problems, kidney, liver, that can make your A1C higher than it is 
despite uh, not eating sugar. So it can alter the results. The other thing to know is that if you're a diabetic, okay, it's initially harder to bring this A1C in blood glucose level down to normal. Why? Because the pancreas has been working really, really hard. And chances are you only have like 50% of the cells that make insulin, the beta cells. And so if you can't make enough insulin, on top of having insulin resistance, which is basically a deficiency of insulin in the cells, you don't have that full magnitude of that push down blood sugar effect from insulin. So the glucose level kind of stays a little bit high because of that. On top of that, your liver is making a lot of new sugar. And that's what happens in diabetes. It's one of the reasons why the blood sugar level is so high uh, if you're not eating sugar because the body is making sugar and you'll see it higher in the morning and it's called the dawn phenomenon. And that's because of this thing called gluconeogenesis, the production of new sugar. So just realize that if you're a diabetic and it's not coming down to normal right away, just give it more time, keep working on it. It's just gonna take some time. It could take weeks, months, usually not a year, but I'm gonna show you at the end of this video how to speed things up. That being said, one of the best indicators to know if, if the program is working, if you're in ketosis by lowering your carbs, if you're not cheating and you're keeping your blood sugars really level for a longer period of time, loss of appetite basically means you're burning fat is the best like indicator to know that you're doing the right things. If someone were to come into my office when I was in my practice and say, it's not working and I have cravings and I'm still hungry, then I know their sugar levels are too high. So I don't even need to do the A1C. But a common confusion, I think, with a lot of people is this. All it takes is a little bit of carb, okay, or sugar, to bump you out of ketosis for a good amount of time, for a couple of days, two or even three days. And I'm talking about even a half a glass of wine or a couple of pieces of bread. Now, why is that? Because you don't just go out of ketosis and go back in real fast. It's easy to go out of ketosis, but it takes, especially in the beginning, a period of two days or longer to get into ketosis. So this cheat day kind of really knocks you out of the program for a good amount of time. So you can imagine if someone's cheating every other day or every third day, the progress they're going to make, not that great, especially if someone is a diabetic or pre-diabetic or has bad insulin resistance and they're having a hard time losing weight, which is the great majority of the population. If someone is a diabetic, uh, they should also know, this is important, if they're struggling keeping this blood sugars down, having a lower A1C, lower blood glucose, and coming off carbs and sugar, they should also at the same time uh, consume a good amount of nutrient-dense foods, foods with phytonutrients, um, supplements that have come from natural sources like a natural B1 or natural sources of vitamin C, things like a turmeric, um, nutrient dense vegetables. The phytonutrients in these foods all can help reduce the complications of diabetes. So even though their blood glucose is high, they can at least protect themselves against all the side effects of diabetes. And hopefully over time, use less of the medication, which sometimes has more side effects than the actual disease itself. And also a blood glucose test just measures the effect of glucose on the blood. Okay. Most sugars like table sugar, honey, even high fructose corn syrup has about a 50-50 split between 50% glucose and 50% fructose. And just a small amount of that fructose affects your blood sugars. It destroys the liver and it acts like alcohol. But as far as your blood sugars, it won't increase it very much. It's the glucose in that table of sugar. So I just wanted to point that out because certain sugars have more fructose than others. Of course, the high fructose corn syrup is kind of a synthetic process type of sugar. Without all the phytonutrients, it's the most deadly. But there is one more sugar that's even more deadly than that. And that would be this agave syrup which is a refined uh, product you know, because it has like 85% of it is fructose. And that's going to go right to the liver. It's not going to affect your blood sugars too much, but it's going to go right to your liver and really uh, create a fatty liver and 
the liver uh, deals with fructose the same as alcohol. Now, when someone comes off sugar completely, okay, and they're not eating hardly any carbs at all, um, why is it that your blood sugars will always be a certain level? Why don't they just come down to zero? Well, you need certain sugar for certain functions. Any of that sugar can be easily made by the liver, okay, from other sources. It doesn't have to come from the body. So your body will always uh, have a certain amount of sugar in the blood. The problem is realizing that the average person consumes way, 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 way too much sugar. In fact, if we take a look at normal sugar, which is roughly about 80 milligrams per deciliter, that's like one teaspoon of sugar, which uh, is like four grams of sugar in all of your blood at one time. So if you don't have any sugar, your body makes it. If you have too much and you test your sugar and it's normal, what that means is in the background is insulin is working really hard to yank that sugar out and putting it in its storage. It can actually, it's raising your bad cholesterol. It's making your liver fatty. So testing your blood glucose doesn't really tell you anything about what's happening with insulin too much, okay, at least initially. And it also doesn't tell you about those cheat days on the weekend because if you do really good during the weekday and then you go off on the weekends and you only test in the weekday, you're not gonna see the whole picture. One point I wanna make about hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. When you think about low blood sugar, you might think it could, be caused by not eating sugar? No, it's caused by eating sugar because what controls sugar is insulin and insulin is too high and it's pushing your blood sugars down. In summary, number one, start consuming a good amount of phytonutrients or nutrient dense foods from your existing diet. We call that the healthy version of the ketogenic diet to decrease the complications of these blood sugars, okay? Number two, apple cider vinegar is really good to take in water diluted through the day to speed up the process of correcting this insulin resistance. Another really good remedy would be uh, berberine. It's equivalent to like taking metformin, but without the side effects. So start to be uh, more strict. If you want to go off the program, go right ahead. Just use it as an experiment to see how you feel. And hopefully you won't um, take as long as I did to eventually have discipline. But give it time to work because it will happen. Now, if you haven't seen my very popular video on blood sugars that has gotten millions of views, you should check that one out. I put it up right here.